Hello friend, this is Rupesh and you are watching CBPNet's video series on C++ multithreading and this is choosing the number of threads at runtime. So this is actually a very important topic. It is as important as knowing the threads because the moment you know the threads and how it works, the next question comes in your mind is, okay, now how many threads? Because this is a very big question mark. So let's try to understand this with one simple example. So let's say you have a very big array. I don't know, I should draw big array really big or yeah, but so let's say it's maybe uh, 4 million elements are there in this. So that's why it's like 0th block and 1st and 2nd and 3rd. Total 4 million. So this block is 1 million and like every block is 1 million. So total 4 million. Now the point is they are not sorted and you have to sort them. And wait a minute, if this number is smaller for you you can go for 40 million so this is like 10 million each block so total 40 million maybe now you may think to use threading force your mind to think about multi-threading if it is not forcing then let's go for 400 millions so now i think you are getting the point the bigger the job you will go for multi-threading for performance so we are talking about the performance here so for simplicity i'll just keep it uh, maybe 4 million. So the idea is let's divide this 4 million into smaller sections and process them separately and then process them as a whole. Now the question comes, okay, how many threads? So the simplest answer to this is the number of cores you have or multi-threading supported in the system. I mean, how many concurrent threads can be executed in your system without actually overlapping with each other? This is very important. Listen very carefully. Let's say you have these four cores, okay? And then you have five threads. You will assign one thread with each core. Then this is left over, right? Now the problem is at a time, one thread is not running. And to give you the feel of concurrency, now the scheduling will happen of these threads. So either of these CPUs will keep on scheduling or switching, I should say, between these threads because this also has to run parallelly, right? Now, this is not good because context switch takes time and there is a battle between threads for the processors who will have to do the context switching. Now, you see where we are going? Actually, we should know upfront how many threads we should create if we are dealing with something like this. I'm not talking about the separation of concerns point here because there are only two reasons you will go for threading which is either performance or separation of concerns like multiple separate activities are happening at the same time or can happen at the same time then you will try to keep them in separate threads but here it's not the point the point is you have a very big job and you want to break that job into multiple pieces so that you can finish those jobs parallelly when this job is actually getting executed, you can finish off this portion also, this also and this also like together. Then at one unit of time, you would have completed four portions if you are using multi-threading. So I'm talking about these kind of usability. But then the question is how many threads? So for that, we have the answer. It is good if you can identify how many processors your application is actually running on because the same application can run on different platforms. So at runtime, you may have to decide how many threads you will create. So there should be a function and there is, and it's called hardware concurrency. I mean, hardware underscore concurrency. We'll see that I have a program ready to explain you that, but you'll have to understand one thing. That function not necessarily gives you the number of cores or different processors you available in the system. It kind of provides you the number of parallel threads can be executed without actually overlapping each other. So that makes more sense because a single processor can handle multiple threads and it depends on your system like how it is configured and what it supports. So better way to do this is to actually find out like how many multiple concurrent threads can be executed in the system. So, so actually really trying to find how many processors are there we'll try to find out how many concurrent threads can be executed because that's our goal. So let's jump to the coding and we'll see there how it works. So if you see this program, we have main here. So it's starting here. Number of workers is again a vector. You have seen all these things 
in previous videos. I have just put amplace back here just to give you a hint that instead of moving you can construct the threads inside the vector. So this is also one of the way because in previous videos I have explained that you can create a thread and then move but instead if your job is really to collect the threads in some vector you can do this as well or there is another way you can directly use subscript operator and assign these thread to that so there are many ways okay let's not go there we will talk about this hardware concurrency this time so i have actually found out how many hardware threads so this is called hardware threads are actually possible for particularly this system so program is written in such a way that if i'll give you the same executable in your system and if it is supporting more than 8 or 16 or 32 or even more than that and then you will see the bigger number for me it is 8 yeah i have already executed it many times so i'll show you the demonstration here and yeah the working is i'm counting how many threads are supported and just creating that many threads it's just that simple it's constructed and then we are waiting for it and then simply just returning so if you will run this let me run this and scroll a bit it is giving me eight threads are actually possible to run concurrently without actually overlapping each other. And it's just a hint. Let me remind you guys, this is just a hint. If this is not implemented for your system, like if it doesn't support in your system, it will return you zero. And then it's not like you will not do anything. And then you will have to take care of that. Like if it is returning zero, it means it's not implemented so you have to do your stuff like maybe count the number of processors and stuff so this is just the hint don't actually 100% rely on this and wait a minute I'll show you the implementation of this don't worry I have found out somewhere on the internet I don't know if that is actually a real code I have first time visited that website so I'm a little confused so if you guys know that website or tell me that if it is authentic place but for the sake of completeness I would like to show you there now you can see it is just the eight threads available in my system and no matter how many times I execute this it will always show me eight see this time also eight and if I'll run this again eight 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 so the good news is you don't have to write your own function to decide like how many threads I should create if you're using hardware concurrency it can give you a hint and let's see now the implementation of this one so as i told you this is some website patchwork ozlabs.org and this is what i see and i'm little confident if i see this so this is lib std c++ so maybe this is the actual definition so if you see this whole thing you'll see the hardware concurrency function name and this minus minus meaning it was previously like this and now they have removed it and plus plus meaning they have added it and if you see it is a diff command maybe to just get the difference so it is telling you how it was before and now what it is and maybe i'm not sure if they have changed it further so the point is they are creating one count and just checking this is macros guys see it's like if it is windows system or ming 64 version or or project thread then or maybe HPU X then they will count number of processors like this otherwise if it is Apple or FreeBSD they will count like this otherwise like this or otherwise like this and if it is none of them then see count was initialized 0 before and if it is not greater than 0 then it will return zero itself otherwise number of counts cool right so initially it was just simple code it will try to find np pros meaning number of processes i mean processors and then it will return you that number but now it's like more system friendly and it can decide depending on the operating system or environment you are using so this is making more sense i can see and guys as i was talking about this mini project or mini assignment i'll quickly try to compile this assignment and record a video so consider subscribing my channel so that you don't miss anything like that and i hope i have covered everything i wanted to cover in this video so we'll sum this i'll see you in the next videos guys bye bye take care